My name is Gary Dewar, and I'm a Somerville artist. I have a studio at 6 Vernon Street, where I've made work for about 18 years. Originally, I'm from Bloomington, Illinois, a small city of about 50,000 in the middle of the state. And we didn't have anything like these statues. Neither did Southern Illinois, where I studied photography, or Iowa City, where I got an MFA in poetry and did intermediate studies in the art department with Hans Brader, a German artist who was part of Fluxus in New York in the 60s. So these were all new to me when I moved to Somerville from Iowa in 1984. I live in East Somerville now on Oliver Street in an 1830s era brickworkers cottage with my wife Leslie Vanatine. Like most people who come to the city for the first time, one of the first things I noticed in Somerville were all the statues and front yards. I heard the nicknames too, like Virgin on the Half Shell and Bathtub Mary. As I walked around the city, I started to take pictures of them with my Yashica medium format film camera, which you hold at waist level and look down into the viewfinder, putting you even with the subject. In 1993, I had a show of about 10 images in the Somerville Library called Front Yard Saints. That was my first exhibition in Somerville. A few years ago, with a new iPhone, I started taking pictures of them again. I had a show of them a while back in the Nave Annex in Davis Square called The Last Saints of Somerville. I used an iPhone app called Hipstamatic because I like the bluish green palette that gives them a slightly unreal quality, almost like they're underwater. And I tried to make eye contact with the statues, getting down on one knee, shooting through chain link fences, focusing on just the saint. I wanted to humanize them, give them some dignity that reflects the amount of care that their owners often put into them, painting the details, wrapping them in plastic during the winter, making elaborate pedestals or niches. I've seen saints in the middle of lush gardens or enclosed in plexiglass boxes with miniature families around them. I understand there can be a kitschy quality to some of the treatments, but I never intended to make fun of them, more like a fondness for the quirkiness. I have a Catholic friend who would help me figure out some of the more obscure saints, like one bearded saint in a green robe carrying a club. Once in a while, there would actually be a bathtub half sunk in the ground. Sometimes, an empty tub would be left. With one saint just around the corner from my house on Oliver Street, the statue is protected by a Byzantine-like wrought iron enclosure. Interestingly, one of the first statues I photographed in Somerville is right next to the house I bought 20 years ago. So I always felt that that was a kind of sign. I used a map from the DBW the last time to keep track of where the statues are. And there are probably hundreds, some of them tucked away on dead-end streets. For my photo project, I only took pictures of saints in the front yard never the backyard. There are many similar mass-manufactured plaster statues out there, and I search for ones that have a different look or setting. When I was taking photos with the iPhone a few years ago, I noticed that many of the statues were missing as the housing bubble converted single-family houses into luxury condos or even gut renovated them. A couple years ago, I did a separate project called Gut about this issue. The black and white images were printed on canvas and posted to the outside of a basketball court near Davis Square. I think these absences will keep happening as Somerville changes and the older generation moves or dies. I've never seen a new statue put in place, only yards with missing things. So the photos also become a record of a way of life that's fading with a tinge of nostalgia. Sometimes the decay or erosion on a statue suggests this too. I'm not very religious. I describe myself as agnostic and definitely not Catholic, but I can still feel the power of these figures and their life in the family of the owners. In my neighborhood that has lots of Salvadoran, Tibetan, and Portuguese families, the loss of the statues feels acute. It's like how much I miss the over-the-top Christmas lights display on a big house on Glen Street around the corner where the illumination tour used to stop. Maybe someday there will be a park for all the uprooted saints, like the Neon Museum in Las Vegas.